Hi everyone. Happy New Year and happy Wednesday. It's almost hard to believe that 2023 is already over. In some ways, it went by so fast that I can't believe it's over. And then in other ways, it feels like it was <laughs> such a long year because we did so much in one year that it almost felt in some ways like two years compiled into one. Um, I'm super grateful for the year I had in 2023. It was very full, like I said. It was full of really good surprises and a lot of abundance, I guess I should say. I started off the year with what I thought might be a bit of a lofty goal and I'm finishing my year very close to having achieved that goal. So that for me is pretty huge. So if you're not sure what I'm referring to, of course, is um, I, at the beginning of last year, I was only at three, around 3,000 subscribers, which was phenomenal. And I was super excited about that. And I sort of threw out the number of trying to reach 15,000 subscribers by the end of this, uh, by the end of 2023. And though I didn't quite get to 15,000, I got very, very close. And so I'm super excited about that. And I'm uber thankful. And I'm thankful to all of you because if it weren't for you, I would have never achieved that goal. And uh, yeah. I'm, I'm very, very thankful for that. I'm thankful for your presence here. I'm thankful for connecting with you every week. Um, I really feel very sincerely in my heart that I have been developing friendships with many of you and I'm really enjoying having a chance to connect with you every week. So thank you so much for being here with me and for making the time to connect. It, more means, it means more to me than you could ever know. So what lies ahead for 2024? <laughs> well, um, like I said, 2023 was a very busy and full year. It was a wonderful year in many ways. It challenged me in a lot of ways as well. And with these challenges, I grew a lot. 2024 for me, I hope will continue to bring abundance. And I'm also inviting more stillness and that may not come as a surprise to <laughs> those of you who've been following my channel over the past year knowing everything that's been going on um I asked myself at one point my what my word of the year for 2024 would be and the word stillness came very, very, very clearly to mind. And so stillness is going to be my word of the year. That doesn't mean I'm going to be completely still. Uh, <laughs> I love to create. I love uh, to do what I do. And I definitely am going to continue doing that. I have some goals in mind for my career and uh, what I do here on YouTube. And I'm going to keep pursuing those and at the same time, I'm going to invite more time for me. I'm going to invite more time for me to just be and connect with myself and connect with nature because those are important things to me too. So I'm starting off the year with a painting um, that was sort of inspired by a dream I had. And I was recently watching a show called all the Light We Cannot See. Um, this was a show on Netflix. And it, I think the theme or the, the title of the show is really uh, what sort of connects with the dream that I had and the painting that I created. But I was really thinking about what it means to have this light within us that helps us shine and be who we are. And so, this painting is near and dear to me and I hope you will enjoy watching the process of me creating it.
I'm going to be working on a square piece of watercolor paper that I've taped to a piece of MDF board. And the first part of my process, I'm going to create a light wash of color. I wanted to start with a, a bit of a, a grayish color that I created using some blue and some light red and lots and lots of water. And I'm just covering my whole entire piece of paper with this color. It's not necessarily the color um, that will completely shine through in the end of the painting process, but it should be there in the background. And um, so I like to start my processes like this by just creating a wash of color in the background and then throwing some salt on the paper because, you know, <laughs> I love working with salt. I love the fact that I throw some salt crystals on there and sometimes some really, really interesting marks are left behind and uh, this helps me get my process going. Because sometimes the fear of um, the white paper or the blank canvas can be in intimidating. It's, it's not always easy to know how to get going. I have a idea in my mind of what it is I'd like to create but it's not completely clear it's going to really develop as I go along and so this is a way for me to get started in a very non-threatening way if you will I'm just creating a wash of color in the background it's a relatively neutral color and so I think this will be something that I can definitely build upon I'm starting to get very used to working with salt and uh, what it can create but I still am really blown away every single time with the marks that are left on the paper uh, when the salt interacts with the, the paint it's it's really <laughs> it's really amazing um, so I want to preserve some of this and so I've decided to create another frame on my um, around my painting and so I'm adding some one inch wide tape over the area that's been painted. I am trying to be careful not to burnish it too much because I don't want to run the risk of having some of the paper pull away uh, when I'm removing it later on and I think this may mean that some of the paint will seep through uh, and underneath the tape and um, that I think could be also really neat because it'll just make the painting the whole entire painting even more cohesive so we'll see I'm not 100% sure I've actually never done this so <laughs> we're going to experiment play and see what happens So I kind of feel like I need to start this painting off with a circle. <laughs> I love circles and this is my first painting of the year and it's representing the light within me and I am feeling like this light needs to shine a little bit like a oh maybe like a beacon from a lighthouse or you know yeah a spotlight well not really a spotlight that's a little bit harsher. <laughs> I don't want to I don't I you know, I love for my light to shine, but I don't want it to be blinding. <laughs> so I'm starting off with a circle and um, then I'm going to move on to adding a little bit more paint.
I'm applying some coarse grain salt here and you may notice that in my container of salt there are some crystals that look a little bit colored and that's because when I'm done drying my artwork and I remove the salt from my paper I keep it because it is still fully functional and usable for other paintings and so it helps to reduce waste and um, reduces the cost of my products I guess. <laughs> So I like to keep the salt and I also try to keep some of the finer grain salt but that's sometimes a little bit more challenging uh, because it, it does tend to be for the most part lost <laughs> once it's done its thing. But the coarse grain salt definitely can be kept afterwards and I don't find that the color crystals uh, when they absorb the paint uh, if I'm using them in another painting, I have yet to see any of that color seep into other paintings. It seems to not really um, have any effect in that way. But if it did, I would probably welcome that as a welcome happy accident, as Bob Ross would say. <laughs> uh, I just like to go with the flow and uh, yeah, why not welcome these things? That background I created uh, with that light wash of initial color and then the sprinkles of coarse grain salt really had um, developed some cool and interesting marks and it's sometimes really difficult to even consider painting over something that I already consider to be beautiful but in my mind I have this image of painting something that will represent light pier piercing through darkness and in order for light to pierce through darkness, darkness needs to come into the picture. <laughs> if there's too much light, the uh, circle in the middle that's going to be representative of that inner light is not really going to stand out because the image is going to be too fine. So there needs to be some contrast. And so I'm adding this uh, wash of neutral tint mixed in a little bit with some blue and lots of water and uh, I'm gonna add a little bit more salt of course to create more texture in that area but I do want to bring in this darkness this dark value is gonna help make the other elements of the painting stand out In this part of my painting process, I'm using a pencil to create some lines that are leading from the center of my painting to the outside of, um, of a painting. And these lines are sort of rec representing uh, little fissures or things that we might consider are broken parts, if you will. Um, I want this to be in my painting because I think it our light not only comes from all the beauty and the things that we consider to be beautiful in life but our our life our light also comes from the brokenness inside of us it comes from the challenges that we've had to face it comes from overcoming these challenges and stepping into who we are and um yeah at the core i think all of us are really love and so i was inspired to create this sort of imagery in my painting um through something i came across uh, many years ago it's it's card called the art of kintsugi and many of you may already have come across this. Um, kintsugi is the Japanese art of putting together broken pieces of pottery using gold. And doing this is a metaphor for embracing our flaws and perfections. So in my painting here, I really want it to be that the light that's inside of me is shining outwards and it's coming out through these fissures and these broken parts of me these little cracks that are um, that are perfect imperfections if you will there are these little parts of me that are, show my struggles but that also help me share my light
I think I've shared on a, on a number of occasions that I don't really believe fully in the concept of perfection or um, trying to attain perfection. And I guess one of the reasons I don't really believe in this is for one, it, it, it is different for everyone. So how can we truly say that <laughs> um, there is an ideal to strive for? because we're all unique. And I guess in that sense, it's not so much that perfection is something we need to strive for. It's something that we already have. It is within us. It is our light. It is the thing that makes us shine. And so I love the idea of the perfect imperfection, the idea that every single part of us is beautiful and makes us the bright and shining light that we are. I once read a quote that I feel also fits very well with all of this um, that I'm sharing with you, and that is that there is a crack in everything, and that's how the light gets in. I also like to think that that's also how the light gets out. It's all, it's through our challenges, it's through our difficulties and the, our so-called imperfections that we grow and develop and um, become stronger, more beautiful people, I think. And so it's not just how the light gets in, it's also how the light gets out. It's how we shine our light into the world. It's through these supposed imperfections, those let's call them perfect imperfections because that's what I think they really are. So today is a beautiful sunny day here in Maine and if I were to go outside right now and bring a big spotlight with me and shine this big, big spotlight on <laughs> the trees in my backyard, I wouldn't see a whole lot of difference um, because it's a bright beautiful sunny day. Shining a big bright light on a bright sunny day <laughs> wouldn't really make that uh, spotlight very useful in a sense. Um, I guess where I'm going with this is that lights shine brightest. They shine their brightest when they shine in the darkness. And uh, yeah, I love that metaphor that light shines brightest in the darkness because we all have challenges, we all have struggles, and yet we have this light in us that um, can shine so bright and can turn the darkest sky into something brighter and more colorful and more beautiful. The darkness, or I guess, is essential. But yeah, the darkness is essential. Our lights wouldn't shine nearly as bright if we didn't have those moments of darkness in our lives.
one point when I was working with my fountain pen, I accidentally dropped it on my paper surface and it left um, some splatters of ink. And instead of getting upset and trying to figure out how I was going to cover this, I thought, well, thank you, universe. <laughs> You just gave me an idea for the next step in my painting process. So I decided that I was going to pull out my micro mini brush and I poured a little bit of water in my neutral tint pan and I'm just adding some more splatters of dark paint into the background of my painting. It might have been better for me to do this before I added the gold but I'm not overly worried about it because the gold is um, tends to be um, pretty powerful and so even if I do cover it a tiny bit I don't think it'll be a, a huge problem and I am happy that this happened because I do think it's going to add uh, a little something special to the painting. I really like what I've done so far and at the same time I feel like it needs a little bit more oomph. <laughs> And so I've decided to add some of this color in my painting and um, please forgive me I can't off the top of my head remember the name of this color but I will include it in my video description and um, it's a color by Michael Graham. I just recently bought these paints from Michael Graham. I'm trying to get comfortable working with them. I do find that the pigments in the colors are really really beautiful but I'm also struggling because the binding medium used in these paints, um, I don't know, the paints are coming from the tube, but I tend to put them in my paint palette. And sometimes there's a little bit more binding medium than I actually would really like to have in my paint. I don't think it's affecting what comes out uh, in terms of um, what sits on my paper too, too much but it makes it a little bit more difficult for me to get the pigmentation that I would like. So I'm still on the fence about my Michael Graham uh, or M Graham. <laughs> I don't even know if the name is Michael, but <laughs> I just gave him a name or whoever a name. So M Graham, sorry. Um, yeah, I'm still on the fence. I'm still on the fence. I'm not giving up on the paints just yet, but um, yeah, I, I'm going to keep trying to work with them and see. I do really love this color and I will include the name of it in my video description. And I think it's going to add a little bit more life to my painting. One thing that's a great part of me and what makes me me is the fact that I'm a very intuitive person. I love to paint intuitive, intuitively and... Um, the color of intuition to me is uh, purple and this is a bit of a reddish purple but it is purple nonetheless and I wanted to add a little bit more of it in my painting because I think it represents that intuitive part of me that is uh, that shines in almost every one of my paintings so earlier on in the process I had told you that I was going to cover the outer edges of um, the background because I wanted to preserve some of it and I wasn't going to press very hard on the tape because I wanted uh, to see what was going to happen and as you can see like I mentioned might happen some of that paint from the center of my painting has seeped through and um, gone to the outer edges of the painting and I actually celebrate this <laughs> I think it looks really really cool and um, it's going to look even cooler now that I'm adding this color on top of it because it's going to sort of take a bit of a step back, but it's still going to show through the transparent paint. So I am really loving this. <laughs> Up until now, the center of my painting, aka the focal point, is a lot darker than um, I would like it to be in order to represent my beacon of light. And so I'm going to start adding some iridescent paint and right now I'm working with my um, new toy. <laughs> uh, it's called Blue Pearl, Brutile something Blue Pearl. <laughs> 
again, it'll be in my video description. I have a hard time remembering all these um, paint names. There's often very different and um, I want to honor them. And so in order to do that, I will do that in my video description. It'll just make it easier for me to flow in my video description here. <laughs> or my my editing process I should say so I'm adding this uh, blue pearl in the center and I will probably layer more uh, iridescent paint on top of it but I I do like the shimmery quality of this paint it also goes really well on top of this magenta like color that's um, in the background of this circle and when it catches the light, it will also have a little something special to offer. So I think it's it's really cool to add it right now. But I'm not just going to add it here. I'll add it somewhere else and I'll show you where in a little bit. My intuitive paintings of course come together one step at a time and for me that journey is not very linear in fact in it in many ways it's more like a dance I take one step forward one step back one step sideways <laughs> it changes so Sometimes I do work that may look like I'm nearing the end of the process, like right now I'm working on building a bit of a golden frame around the center of my painting, and so it might look like I'm, I'm working towards the final elements, and in some ways I am, but that doesn't mean I still don't want to do some work in the center. It just means that my intuition asked me to do this because I wanted to see how the golden frame would play with the center of the painting and what I would be guided to do after I add this because right now there is gold in the painting it's beautiful I like how it sort of spreads out but I wanted to add some of it to the exterior part of the painting as well to sort of bring everything together and until I do this it's hard for me to know exactly what else I want to do in the center of my painting. And I hope that makes sense. <laughs> to me, it really does make sense. Um, but I can understand that for some of you, it may be a little bit confusing because, like I said, it's not a very linear process at all. It is very much more like a dance. And um, <laughs> hopefully it's not really a frantic dance. But it is a dance that to me makes a lot of sense. It's all about listening to my guidance, my inner guidance, and following the next steps that my intuition are guiding me to take.
At this point of the process, I was feeling ready to take the tape off and I thought maybe I was done with my painting. And then I felt called to do a little something else. And so I pulled out my Kramer Pigments um, per luster set and I added some polar white. It doesn't make a hugely significant difference, but to me it was the perfect final touch. And now I feel like this little rendition of what I'm calling my inner light is ready for a close-up. Every painting process is a journey and it's a wonderful chance to learn and grow along the way. How are you feeling called to shine your inner light on the world in 2024? If you can, make time to share this with me in the comments below. I always love hearing from you. Thank you again for making the time to join me on my creative journey. I hope you have a wonderful week, a very happy 2024, and don't forget, happy creating, my friends! <laughs>